For the fastest, cheapest, and most reliable coins in the market with a no band guaranteed delivery, check out my coin sponsor, MOXP.com, and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Teams. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff of the Mad Cheese, as always. Got another update video for you guys today. Today, I'm going to be going over the uh, newly released player ratings that just came out. Uh, but before I do, if you guys want to see more videos like this, as always, make sure to be a subscriber, like button, and let me know in the comment section as I try to do this every single week since they release ratings every single week, and they will straight through to the Super Bowl. Uh, but this is not a uh, title update. The title update came out last week. It was a pretty significant one. I imagine the next one's probably going to be a little bit larger. Uh, but this one here, I don't think that they necessarily uh, patched anything. Let me know in the comment section if they fixed the fatigue issue because I know that's something that they're working on since they created it last uh, in last update. I think it was on the 10th. So I know they're trying to fix that, but I don't know if this patch actually did anything about that. I do know, though, that there are some player rings. I'm going to go over them right now. I would imagine, like I said, I usually read these live and I usually try to give you guys my live reaction, but I would imagine that um, you know the majority of these ratings are going to be players uh, that's uh, lost in the first wild card game. Uh, and the highest rated player, no surprise to me, is from the Dallas Cowboys. Zach Martin is the highest rated player to go down a point. This was the first year I think that he actually reached the 99 club. I've been saying for a while that I think Patrick Mahomes or Travis Kelsey, who also Travis Kelsey first year under a thousand yards in like the last eight seasons, uh, deserve to go down a point. I keep pioneering for that, but they did win their first round in pretty dominant fashion. So I can't say that now. I think that that opportunity either passed or or maybe realistically, if they lose in the next playoff game, maybe that'll happen. I still feel like that should happen. I don't feel like either one of them played at a 99 overall rating this year compared to guys like Aaron Donald, who still played at a very high level, although I think his rating 99 is kind of overdue too. Justin Jefferson definitely played at 99 level before he got hurt as he was like running away with every statistical category. Tyreek Hill definitely played at a 99 level as he had the most receiving yards in the league, I think. Uh, you know, those guys, I can't really argue. Although, like I said, Don Aaron Donald, I think to me, Donald, Mahomes, and Kelsey don't necessarily didn't necessarily play this year at a 99 level. While a guy like Christian McCaffrey, who's only a 98, or guys like Miles Garrett, who's only a 98, should have been maybe bumped up. A guy like Trent Williams, only at a 98. These are all guys I think could be bumped up to a 99 who played at that level this year. Zach Martin, I can't really say. I don't know why his his rating went down. I'm sure the entire Cowboys team probably went down after that performance. Uh, as we're continuing forward, Mika Parsons, another guy who I've been saying for a while I feel is overrated. Even Skip. Bayless and a lot of Cowboys fans after that performance where he really no-showed were saying the same thing, that he, he, he really is overrated. And I've been saying that for a long time in these videos. Uh, C.D. Lamb did not go down. He's still 96. Can't say that about him. He had a really good year. But Mika Parsons, to me, I mean, he's kind of one-dimensional. He's a really great pass rusher, but that's about it. He doesn't really stop the run. He doesn't really do much else in that regard, at least as a defensive end. As a linebacker, it'd be a different story. But as a defensive end, he's just too small to play that position. It just is what it is. Uh, Nick Chubb went down last week despite being injured all year. He went down to 96, but he has not moved. So I had to point that out because I thought that was really strange. Mostly, like I said, the majority of these are going to be guys that played in the playoffs, uh, although I'm not seeing a lot of other guys go down. Now, we have Jair Alexander. He went up a point to a 92 for the Packers, the other side of the coin that uh, beat the uh, beat the Cowboys pretty handily. He's another guy which I never really understand why he goes down the way that he does. I mean, every year, EA seems to mess with this guy's rating. He started the year as a 95, and he was all the way down to a 91. Uh, before last week's playoff performance. I don't know what he did in the playoff game, uh, but he's a really good player. I don't understand why they're constantly always downgrading him. Uh, one of the better cornerbacks in the game. Uh, Jason Kelsey, Philadelphia Eagle, possibly retired. I don't know really know, know what's going on there, but I guess that tush-push failure on the two-point conversion knocked him down a point because everybody kind of attributes the tush push to him getting lower and being one of the greatest centers of all time and yada, yada, yada. I guess they knocked him down based off of that. I mean, I don't know what else it could have been. I don't really remember him doing anything in that disastrous performance by the Eagles to make him go down a point. But like I said, I'm sure failing that tush push, despite the fact that they've converted just about every other one the entire year, was the reason that his rating went down. Another guy that went down, Darius Slay. I'm noticing a trend here. Eagles, Cowboys, a lot of down ratings. I, I'm hoping Jalen Hurts doesn't go down. I haven't gotten that far yet, but he did have a 100 quarterback rating in that loss despite terrible play calling, which most people are pointing out. But I got a feeling he's going to go down like two points. But we'll see. Darius Slade down a point uh, to a 91. Another guy that, um, I mean, coming off of an injury, came back and played. I mean, I'm guessing if I went far enough, I'm guessing James Bradbury went down like five points. He was the one that was getting pooped on for most of the game. Uh, Keenan Allen didn't play, by the way. Uh, he did go down. He didn't go down a point. 
but looking at it as I'm passing by, he did go down two awareness points. So not playing, but still going down. Mike Evans probably could have went up. I think he had a pretty strong performance, uh, although he did have a drop. This is another guy who, um, you know, he's been going up all year. He started the year at uh, 90, and he went all the way up to a 91. So <laughs> I guess he's that's he's kind of like the standard. That's like his standard rating for like the last, you know, 10 years or however long he's been in the league. Uh, but he didn't really go down, go up or down at all. He never really does. Uh, Dak Prescott, I said, based off of that performance, he probably should have went down two points. But he only went down one point. He went down to a 90, uh, a three drop in awareness. I know by the end of the game he had like 400 yards. But when the game was, you know, actually mattering, he was just throwing pick sixes. He th almost threw pick two pick sixes in that game. Kevin Byard, another Eagles player that, you know, probably deserves to go down. He really only did one thing the entire time that he was an Eagle. Started the year off as a 92 uh, and went all the way down to what he's lowest at right now is a 90. Once again, I don't know if that's really his fault. They changed defensive coordinators once he got there. He never really had a chance to learn the scheme or, you know, nobody learned the scheme. That's the whole problem with the Eagles. Nobody knew what the hell they were doing by the end of the year. So to me, it's clearly coaching, but, you know, call it what you want to call. He definitely didn't play up to a 90 level at all or anything like that. He's definitely not playing that way. I don't know if he's still a player or not. Maybe time will tell. Aaron Jones went up a point. Here's a guy. He should have went up at least two points. To me, if you're balling out in a playoff game in a do or die situation like that, especially to the level that he did these one point swings don't really feel like enough i feel like these should, like all these should be like two point swings because that's how critical these these performances were so he went up mostly just in awareness he went up three points in awareness which was good enough to get him up to an 89 once again started the year as an 88 had a two point bump the first we got to a 90 and then you know right now he's at 89 so still a really good player one of the best running backs in the game it really doesn't get that credit uh david and joku went up another point despite the loss uh, he went up another point, ending the year very strong at an 89, up five points. And like I said, he, if you watched him play, he, he became one of the best tight ends in the league. Happy for Cleveland for that uh, because he's kind of a guy like, you know, it took him a while. Like a lot of these first-round tight ends don't necessarily blow up and become big right away, but he uh, he eventually did, and now he's just looking like one of the best tight ends in the game. I uh, absolutely love watching some Njoku. Uh, moving forward, uh, another guy on a winning team that went up, Trey Smith, right guard out of uh, Kansas City. I could have swore that uh, Tyler Smith – had a bad game. You know, speaking of the Cowboys, I wouldn't be surprised to see him go down. But he goes up a point now to an 89. I'm not really sure. I didn't get a chance to check on what he was at the start of the year. I'm going to go back and I'm going to do that because, to me, that's interesting. To me, that's one of the more interesting things to see how far these guys have come in a year. Well, start of the year is an 82. Like I said, up seven full points. One of the best interior lines in the game right there in Kansas City, and they're still alive. Uh, let me know in the comment section, by the way, who you guys think are going to win this weekend's game, because that's also interesting. Stefan Gilmore, now he went down two points. He was getting pooped on in that game, just not fast enough. I know one play in particular, uh, they ran like what looked like a corner, or like a, like a slant, and then he broke it back outside. He was just wide open by like 15 yards. A lot of the plays that the that the Packers were doing in that game look similar to like what I do in Madden, where it looks like it was just like a straight-up glitch. Like, how did Musgrave get that wide open? How did that receiver, I don't remember who receiver it was but how do you get that wide open now on that play uh kind of exposing gilmore gilmore despite and i said this going back because i've been doing this all year i think he went up two points in week 14 i said then i was like why you know what i mean like i didn't understand it like he's he's a good he's a good player like i think he deserves to be in the 80s somewhere it's kind of where he is now but realistically i i don't think he really played to that level he, he's actually down on the year he started the years in 91 down in 88 which makes sense i kind of feel like he's a very tenacious corner he's a very physical corner he still has a lot of ability but he's just not like a top tier corner anymore in my opinion especially at his age uh travis atn went down didn't even play another guy a couple guys on this list is like wait a minute they didn't even play he's up four points on the year but he did top out at a 90 at one point uh and for some reason they felt the need to even after he didn't play he was an 89 last week for some reason they decided to drop him three awareness points i don't know if they went back and watched tape or what but he's down to an 88 Tua tonga vailoa did nothing in that playoff game um the the, the ball the rave or i mean part maybe it's partially weather anytime you got a, a warm weather team going to a cold area like that that had all that snow i mean what are you gonna what are you gonna do so part of me thought that 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 was setting miami up to fail but he went down three awareness points and lost two overall like i said there's a lot of guys that i feel like should be negative two overall or plus two overall based off the significance of the game uh and he's one of them Derek stingley jr up a point another guy started the year uh relatively under the radar despite being a former what was he a top five pick top three pick something like that he's up 10 points in years now in a seven start the year as a 77 in launch and i don't think he does i thought 77 was too low at the start of the year so it's good to see him really move up because he had a pretty 
really good rookie year in my opinion. A lot of these guys, uh, him, Tyreek Woolen, and you know, they just kind of flew under the radar because of guys, young guys like Sauce Gardner, and you know, uh, there's just that draft class was pretty loaded, and they really didn't get their due. But they're moving up quick. Jordan Poyer went down a point despite the Bills winning. I'm not really sure why he went down a point, but here's another guy down three points on the year uh, from his start at a 90 overall. I'm not really sure what's going on there. Um, you know, I, I think he's, he's probably still a really, really good player. I don't know what's going on with Buffalo Bills fans. have to tell me. Hassan Reddick. Now, his guy hasn't had a sack in a while. I can't really necessarily argue with this. I thought it was – he lost the point in one game earlier in the year. I think it might have been after the Cowboys game or something like that where he had like two sacks, and I didn't understand that. So I argued that, but he hasn't really done much lately. I think he got benched halfway through the game or something like that against the against the, um, the Bucks. Uh, something to do with um, not tackling or something like that. That whole entire team should take a hit in tackling rating after that performance. But realistically, he lost four awareness points, and I definitely don't agree with his 86 overall. I think his speed should be higher, too. He's only an 86 speed. I think they got Hassan Reddick all messed up. The guy had 11 and a half sacks, and I'm pretty sure he made the Pro Bowl, if I'm not wrong, if I'm correct me if I'm wrong there, but he's down four points on the year, which I don't necessarily agree with. I know last year he ended with like 16 and a half sacks or something crazy. So being five sacks down, I don't think it's worth being four points down. But a negative two, not really feeling that. Like I said, to me, he's he, he was probably somewhere in the 88 range. He probably should have stayed there, but it's whatever. Still a really good player. Isaiah Pacheco, here's a guy who's been rising all year, up to an A6, up one point. Another guy, I mean, in the Super Bowl, he was probably the offensive MVP. I know Mahomes, I think Mahomes got the MVP, but he was probably the MVP. If it wasn't for the fact that the Eagles couldn't stop him on the ground, uh, I think they would have pulled that out because he was really doing the most for them. Uh, he's all the way up to an A6 now. Got a one-point boost, once again, awareness. Uh, really the big thing going up. Ladarius Sneed, or Ladarius Sneed, I always say his name wrong. Free agent cornerback, by the way. Hopefully the, uh, I mean, he's going to get paid somewhere, but hopefully uh, so hopefully the Eagles can pick him up. He's a great player. He's up a point to an A6. I don't know how he's rated so low. Isn't he like all pro, or uh, I know he at least made the Pro Bowl. He's one of the best cornerbacks in the game. Still too lowly rated. The entire Chiefs defense, by the way, and I said this in my last video, their offense is the highest rated offense in Madden. Out of 92, just off of reputation. Everybody knows their defense is really what's getting it done. Nick Bolton, another guy to go up a point. One of the best linebackers in the game. I don't know when he's going to get his shine. He started the year as an 87. You're telling me he went down a point on the year? the fuck are you talking about? One of the best linebackers in the game. Wyatt Teller down a point. Another guy uh, who's probably down the year, started the year as an A6. I guess not. Now he's in the year as an A6. Uh, but once, a team, once again, team lost. So that's probably something to do with that. I'm going to move through these pretty quick because I do want to see some of the, uh, you know, I want to I want to stop at James Bradbury because that dude needs to be like negative five. Uh, Greg Newsom went down a point. guess he was giving up some big plays. Jamel Dean uh, got a plus two overall. I'm not really sure why. I'm, I'm guessing he wasn't covering Smitty because Smitty had a game. I didn't see Smitty, by the way. I went through this list. If Devontae Smith didn't get an upgrade, he was the only receiver playing. They knew they had to throw the ball at him, and he still had 150 yards. So I don't understand why he didn't get a plus one for that performance because it was a huge performance, especially when the entire defense is watching you. Uh, Jeremy, Jeremiah awusu Kormoa got a plus one up to an 85. Another guy who was, I think, like three straight plays. He had tackles in the backfield. I mean, he was just all over the place, but it didn't matter. Raheem Mostert, minus one to an 85. All right, big movers. Jordan Love, the face of this, went up three points, which makes sense. I've been using the Packers a lot. If you guys have been watching my gameplays, I love using the Packers. I love all that speed they have, all the young talent they have. Love that team as a young team. David Moore also had a, a really big touchdown catch against the Eagles. I think he had a couple big catches. He went up plus 271, uh, but that's it. Like, I don't even see I don't even see James Bradbury. Tim Patrick, for some reason, randomly went down, even though he didn't play for the Broncos. But uh, I don't know how James Bradbury didn't at least lose like five, six points because he was just absolutely trash. Yeah, he went down two, so I don't know. Maybe I just missed that somewhere. Uh, but he went down two to, a, to an 81. Hopefully they're going to get rid of him. Well, I really don't know. But that's the video. I'm going to go ahead and end it there. If you guys want to see uh, more videos like this, as always, please make sure to be subscribed. Like button, let me know in the comment section. Other than that, thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like eBooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.